Welcome to Bet On It. I'm Marco D'Angelo, your host this week. Kelly Stewart is off this week. Your first bad beat of the 2019, uh, <laughs> finishing up 2019 season here. We're going to break down week 17 NFL card. I'm in studio with Gianni, the Greek gambler. You can follow him on Twitter at Greek underscore gambler. Let's get this week's show started. Usually we start with the primetime games ace, but this week we're going to push the primetime games to the second segment because I want to talk about week 17 handicapping as it is completely different, somewhat tricky uh, from the regular season. And we're going to talk about some different things that you got to look at in week 17. And ace, I got to start with the first thing you're going to hear all week long, everybody, the talking heads, you're going to hear this team's in a must-win situation. You're going to hear that over and over again. Well, there's really only one playoff spot that's not been determined. Everybody's determined who's going to be in the playoffs. It's just where they're seating. Yeah, where their seating is going to move around, but there's one playoff spot up for grabs, and that is in the AFC, the number six seed. Uh, who's going to get that one? And the team that's in the must-win and controls their own destiny is the Tennessee Titans. They're going to be playing Houston this week. But Ace, you know that whenever we get to this point, I know it, you know it, everybody that's watching this show knows it, and Vegas knows we all know that. And it's going to be baked in the line. You're going to pay a premium for it. It reminds me of pretty much what you have to face week in and week out when you're betting NFL or anything else. The spread becomes the great equalizer. You know, more times than not, we know whether Team A is better than Team B on the field. I mean, there's a lot of coin flips, don't get me wrong, but a lot of times we know whether Team A or Team B is better. It's how many points better is Team A than, point, than Team B. In the NFL, at least over the last three or four weeks, it hasn't mattered. Mm -hmm. It's pick the winner, you cover the spread. I think it's something like 30 and one or something like that. Only one game over the last three or four weeks, the spread even mattered. So, I mean, it's difficult from one angle because, again, we're, our job is to find and bet good numbers. But when you're dealing with a market where, obviously, at least the last couple of weeks, the number hasn't mattered, mm. and going into playoffs, we know historically that's been the case. Pick the winner. Don't worry about the spread. Well, how do you deal with week? It's been an 80, the final week of 17 with an, these lines. An 80% thing right for, around there right to during the regular season the winner of the game is also the winner of the point spread and we've seen as you said when we get to the playoffs that bumps up even a little bit higher on the percentage with the team that's winning now so obviously now we've put the teams where the must win you're going to pay a price for it but you got to weigh is it still worth it or not what is the agenda of the opposing team are they going to just roll over and die mm. or are they in a spoilers role it's different whenever it's a team that's already in the playoffs. Do they want to risk injury because they've got their big game the next week? But in this case, Houston does have something to play for, but they need help. Right, they, can right. move, they can move up, up a spot, but they need Kansas City to lose. Um, another thing that you've got to look at uh, are the teams that have nothing to play for. Now, there's two categories of teams that don't have anything to play for. Teams that are out of the playoffs completely, and they can only play spoiler. Um, I like to look at some of these teams if they're playing at home, and they can play spoiler on that final Sunday, or if they're playing a division rival, because you, you have your rivalry games, and misery loves company. If you can screw up somebody else's playoff chances, uh, you know, playing spoiler, you're going to be up for that. Now, unfortunately, in this season, we only have that one spot where you can knock somebody out, and it is a team that's in the playoffs. But the other uh, situation is, how do you handle the teams that are in the playoffs but don't have anything to, to play, play for? for right. Because their position is locked in, and we have a couple of those this week. One of those, and we'll be talking about these games differently, but the first one that comes to mind is the Pittsburgh Baltimore game. Now, you look at this one and talk about Baltimore. They've got the number one seed locked up. They got everything. They've already announced they're not, you know, playing Lamar Jackson. RG3 is going to be getting the start. And I know 
Uh, somebody we used to do this show with is pretty excited about our RG3. Seeing RG3 did, again yeah, on the field. Yeah, on the field. So um, how do you look at something like that with a game? Here's the bottom line, that you got to look at the number. Because, again, you know this game, if it was being played last week or three weeks ago, Baltimore's around a two-touchdown favorite. That's the bottom line. That's the difficulty of week 17. That's why most bookmakers, if they had their, you know, if they could choose, they would not book this week. This is one of the most difficult weeks to make book because of that situation where you know these lines are off. And what I mean by that is perfect situation. I look at the power ratings of some of these and they're not even close to what it should be. The Ravens Steelers, perfect example, the game you touched on. It should be a two touchdown favorite, and they're not. You look at the Houston Texans, they should be over a field goal favorite, and they're not. They're getting points. How do you approach it? Here's the they just the Houston uh, Tennessee game, they just played it. Exactly. Tennessee. They exactly. were getting three. There. Exactly. That's the difficulty, Marco. But here's the key that 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 the one the one takeaway that's most important for me is this long term. If you take the worst of it, you're guaranteed to lose money in the long term, not in the short term. And when you look at week 17, it's how do you approach it? Because sometimes you could take the worst of it and still win. And what I mean by that is if I give you 20 to 1 on a coin flip, that's a great bet for you. But if we only flip that coin one time, I could walk away the winner, even though you placed a wonderful bet. Getting 20 to 1 only guarantees you one thing. If we flip it a lot of times, you're going to walk away with my money. But if we only flip it once, you're not guaranteed anything. Same with, with getting the best of the number. If the line should be minus 3 and I got pick them in my pocket, that don't guarantee me I'm going to cash a ticket when they play this game. But if I could get pick them in my pocket when it's minus 3 over and over and over again, I'm going to beat the bookies and I'll be in that 1% that actually does it. And that's the difficulty of week 17 quantifying what is all this worth because again the best the best example is the Pittsburgh Steelers Baltimore Ravens yeah. what is that line if they played last week compared to this week and another motivational uh, angle that I'm look at because let's face it it's week 17 are you going to be motivated to play if no. you're out of the playoffs no. here is something that I found that over the years um, that I will look at a team if they are seven and eight they have a reason to play because yeah your season you didn't reach your goal there's no question but if you can get to eight and eight the build off yeah you're not you're not a loser you didn't have a losing season so uh mentally that's something that teams like to look at and then uh, and there's a case in point talk about the atlanta falcons dan quinn's job is in jeopardy this team's playing hard down the stretch for, for him. Yeah, they like like they, they, they want to save his job. They've openly said that, and the team's playing well. You know, do you look at momentum at the end of the season, a team playing like that? I, I think it's a motivational angle. Yeah, I mean, listen, when, if a team ha- is rolling and, and you see no reason for that to stop just because it's the last week of the season, then I, I agree with you. But the, the, the problem becomes if some of these teams find themselves falling behind by a touchdown. Are they on the phone at halftime calling the travel agency already (laughs) and booking their flight to the Caribbean for when this game's over? You know, I think in-game is is this is that week where you may want to take advantage of some in-game, maybe pause before you bet some of these teams that have nothing to play for and see. Are they, you know, is there any effort at least you're seeing? All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. But when we return, we are going to look at the primetime games and dig inside the numbers here in the NFL's primetime games. Well, that's up next on Bet On It. Get $25 in wager bucks added to your account after your first purchase at wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com. This is just our way of saying thank you for joining the Wager Talk and Sports Memo family. Did you know every Tuesday is $2 Tuesday at wagertalk.com? We pick the hottest handicapper and offer his best bet for just $2. This is a great way to introduce yourself to the winning handicappers at wagertalk and sportsmemo.com. Welcome back to Bet On It. All the games are being played on Sunday this week with the most important games being played at 425 Eastern. So the teams involved in the playoff races are playing at the same time. Then the biggest game of the day is Sunday night and that's in Seattle. So let's get started with the primetime games. 
Ace, we're going to go with two primetime games this week. The biggest game, we kind of talked about it a little bit in the first segment, but it is the Tennessee-Houston game. That's at 425. They also have the Pittsburgh-Baltimore game at 425 because if Tennessee wins, they're in. It's over. If Tennessee loses and Pittsburgh beats Baltimore, Pittsburgh gets that number six seed. And then there is even a strange scenario that the Oakland Raiders, believe it or not, are still alive for a playoff spot. They would need Pittsburgh to lose, Tennessee to lose, the Indianapolis Colts to win, and Oakland to win. Yeah, and then they win, they win some kind of tiebreaker. Uh, so we've seen stranger things happen, but let's talk about this Tennessee-Houston game. And this is a game where you are paying the price. We talked about it. Tennessee's minus three and a half. Give me your take on this game, and I have a little feeling we might be disagreeing. Yeah, you, you know going in that the line's not where it should be based on Houston versus Tennessee if this wasn't week 17. And we know that because they played, what, two weeks prior. And Tennessee was only a three-point favorite at home, and they lost that game. So the fact they lost at home, and now they're even a bigger favorite two weeks later on the road against the team they lost to makes absolutely no sense unless it's week 17. But does it make sense? Personally, as a better who has now, I've reached that point where I truly do just look to pick off value and not worry about the result. If I see a line that I think's off, I bet it, move on to the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one. It's automatic for me to bet the Texans. Now, I haven't placed a single bet on week 17. I take that back. I've placed a lot of bets on week 17. I haven't released a single bet on week 17 to my subscribers because I only release the stuff to them that I think's the strongest legit moves. And I know week 17, historically, we bet a, we play a lot of middles. There's a lot of setups. The books are, are so fearful of this that they move the line so significantly, it takes even less money to manipulate a week 17 market. Wise guys know this, so they do a lot of manipulation. Be careful trying to read lines on week 17. Um, yeah, it's a difficult task, even if you know what's going on. Uh, I like the Texans, man. I just think, bottom line, even with no, if there's nothing to play for, the, all I could look for is line value. And at least here, I know I'm getting it. At, at the very least, at least I believe I'm getting it because I, I don't know how to quantify motivation or must win. Like, I don't know what those points are worth. Since I don't know for certain, I got to take the three, three and a half, what it is. Yeah, this is the one time I'm going to disagree with you and take what I will say is the worst of the line, but I'm going to preface That's that. That's okay. Say, There's a lot of times you take a bad that you know you're laying more and you say, you know what, this should be seven. Okay. It's not even high enough. Well, here's my take on it. This is the one game. This game goes at 425. Kansas City goes at one o'clock. If Kansas City at one o'clock beats the Chargers. Which they're favored to do by over a touchdown, right? Then Houston has nothing. They can't. The game is totally meaningless for them because they can't improve their position. I don't see Phillip Rivers going into Kansas City and beating the Chargers. So I see Kansas City winning, which makes this game meaningless. They can't, they can't move to the three spot. They're locked in the four spot for Houston. If that happens... I think you're going to see a rush on the line that this line ends up going even higher, higher. Right. Where and I may, think may th pull some starters even. Yeah, you bet Tennessee now for just value's sake, even though this is a bad number, it's not it, going to come back the other way. Exactly. The number's going to go higher. The only if way it's going to move is the other way. So I'm going to take Tennessee here, and I, I'm sense. either going to hold the ticket or let it go to five and a half or six points. If they, you know, over adjust. It was at one point. It yeah. was at five and a half. So that, it probably will move back in that direction. Then I could go back and take some money the other way if I want to have a little middle there. But I think Tennessee gets the job done. Okay. Um, just because, you know, they've played well. Houston, that was a big game last week for them. And what concerns me with Houston is the defense has given up some yardage, you know. Last week, Jameis Winston, when he threw it to the right color jerseys, was moving the yeah, football yeah, against yeah. them. Okay? And when you're the benefactor of five turnovers and you only win by three points, that's a little bit of a concern for me uh, moving forward. And I think they want to get in and get out. So that's the reason I'm on Tennessee in that one. Now, 
For the night game, this is a tough one. Uh, you've it got is. you've got San Francisco at Seattle. You talk about a game with you know big implications because San Francisco can go all the way to the number one seed, or they could go to a wild card. Um, same with Seattle, they can be the division winner, or they could be the wild card. So there's a lot Ooh. on the line here. But Seattle, they're so banged up. The running back position, they had to go out and sign Marshawn Lynch to the squad, and he's going to play. How do you handicap a game with the multiple injuries that we have? It's very difficult. And then you couple that with the fact Seattle hasn't played their best ball at home this year. I mean, they're one game above 500 there, I believe. Um, Not the Seattle of old, you know, where – most guys were giving them three and a half, if not four points for home field advantage. Not so strong this season. Where on the flip side, you look at the San Francisco squad, they've only lost one road game this season. And they have a little revenge for Seattle going into San Francisco and beating them um, on the road. I got to lean to the San Francisco side. I don't think there's a lot of line value there. You know, that, that's the only issue. Um, if you're looking for line value, I don't think it, it's available. I don't even think the Seattle side offers it. I think this line's pretty much where it should be. And that's just the case of the odds makers doing a pretty good job. And I think the lack of significant movement kind of reflects that this is the case. So it'll be interesting to see where this line moves. My initial take is I like the San Francisco side for those reasons. I haven't bet it because I just don't see the line value with it. I'm going to go with Seattle because I do think it's a little bit over-adjusted because of the yeah, running back slightly, situation. Yeah, it is. It and, is. I think it should be around two, and, and three know, is key. And last week, we all were on Arizona. We liked Arizona against Seattle because Seattle was in a horrible spot. They were coming off that four weeks, four road games in five weeks oh, yeah. and everything else, and then they had this game on the horizon. It was just a horrible spot for them. But my concern with San Francisco is the first seven games of the season, they held all their opponents to 20 points or less. In the last eight games, Things six, got difficult. six of the last eight games, they've allowed 25 points or more. And in the last three games, they've allowed 106 points. Now, they catch a break that Seattle's banged up. But as long as I still have a healthy Russell Wilson, they're I, lying. I, I, they're they're lying. lying. home dog, you know. We got about two minutes left, uh, Ace. So we're going to have to run. questions. We're going to have, no, we're gonna have to run the lines, uh, the big moves. Okay. And we talked about them. And I'm going to read the moves, and you just tell me justified or not justified Quickly, without a thing. Houston, minus one, now we, Tennessee. We talked minus. about it. Yep. They're going to bet it up. They have to. It's a must-win situation. Minnesota, op- the opening line, we, the look-ahead line was minus seven. It's now one. You know why? Because it doesn't – It means they, absolutely nothing. For, I, I, so those are obviously justified. They're, they got to do it. Now is their value the other ways that the, the – question a better has to answer Jacksonville was minus one and a half on the opener uh look ahead Indy's now three and a half yeah I don't think that's that's, that's a big that's a big that's move. a big jump for no reason Tampa minus two now pick that's the scenario anti Jameis and Everybody Atlanta sold. playing well yeah, I mean Dallas this one minus seven and a half and now 11 uh, Case Keenum is the starter. I don't think the drop off's that significant. I don't see it either. No. Uh, then we go Saints, Carolina. Saints look ahead was 11, now 13. And it's going to keep getting bet up. The Saints just, they look invincible right now. Um, we talked to Pittsburgh, Baltimore. The look ahead was Baltimore 3. It's now Pittsburgh 2. We talked about that one in detail. Green Bay, minus 10 was the look ahead, now 12 and a half. I just the think Lions look like the team, the worst team in football, pretty much. Absolutely. And uh, the last one, we talked about it. The look ahead was uh, Seattle a pick, and now it's three and a half. And it's because of the injuries, no question. Uh, great segment, Ace. I appreciate uh, all your input on these games. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, guys. When we come back, it is the time you guys want. We're going to have VR's. Uh, Steam game, and I will be back with the deli's open. I told you it was going to be closed. Boys are eating. We've got one more sandwich game that is up next here on Bet on It. Looking for more NFL betting info? Then tune into the presidential address each week when Wager Talk's own Lawrence Presman, the Prez, along with Ralph Michaels, break down this week's entire NFL card. The show is available every week exclusively at Wager Talk TV. 
Get 12 full months of all access from your favorite wagertalk.com or sportsmemo.com capper for just $1,200. That's just $100 a month to receive every play in all sports from your favorite capper, including all 5% plays that normally sell for $40 by themselves. This is the deal of the year. Just use coupon code GIFT100 at checkout and receive 12 full months for $1,200. This is a savings of $7.99. Welcome back to bet on it. Well, now that we've went inside the numbers, it's time to check out our teasers of the week. VR, I'm going to start with you. Where is your two team teaser of the week? You know, I like to tease those numbers, but they got to be on sides that at least I lean, even though you really should play teasers based strictly on the numbers. We're going to go ahead and use the New York <laughs> Jets because we're able to get them up past that three, past that seven up to eight and a half. And then we're gonna take the Jacksonville Jaguars up also against Indianapolis. They're already past that three and a half, so we're only getting the seven, but I think getting them up to that nine and a half range is just way too many points as a home dog in that division. So give me Jacksonville and the Jets as my two team teaser. Yeah, I think we've seen some fours starting to pop up. Yeah, I think get that's 10. getting you to the 10. Yep, so yep. I would hold on uh, so that Agreed. you can get that 10. Now for my teaser, VR, the first one is automatic for me. I'm teasing Baltimore. I was going to use that. Okay. It just, I'm sorry. Pittsburgh, I don't care who's at quarterback uh, for Baltimore. The Steelers still have to score, okay? It's going to be a dogfight as far as defenses go with Pittsburgh. But this offense cannot get any separation. Uh, and you're talking about a quarterback situation. Duck Hodges got benched last week. They brought in Mason Rudolph. He gets hurt, and they had to bring Hodges back in. Where's, where's the confidence level yeah, for yeah. Hodges now? Um, they haven't been able to score points, and I've made money week after week teasing against the Steelers I just like because they don't have any uh, offense right now, and this is just too much uh, for them to cover. I, think, I can't see them getting to a 10-point victory. The second one, now you're going to have to shop for the lines, and this will determine whether or not you use a six-point teaser or a seven-point teaser. There are still eights and eight and a halfs out there, but we're starting to see nines on the Kansas gotta City shop, game. Man, you gotta so shop, man. You got to shop. So if you can get eight and a half, you can use the six-point teaser and get Kansas City down to two and a half. That's where we want to get. That's the end goal. If you have to take a nine, then you got to use a seven-point teaser here uh, for the two games, and that is fine as well. But all we want is get Kansas City under that field goal because I just don't see – the San Diego, or yeah, the San Diego Chargers, the L.A. There'll Chargers. There always be San Diego you know, to me. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, San Diego has a better chance of winning this game than the yeah. L.A. Chargers, okay? For sure. uh, I just don't see Phillip Rivers going into Arrowhead and coming out with a victory. So I'm going to tease Kansas City down. That's my two-team teaser. Well, Ace, we got the teasers. I like it. Um, we're going to go look at uh, sandwich games and trap games and uh, steam games. For me, I've got a sandwich coming. I told you the deli was going to be closed last week, but we still got We're a, eating today. We still got a sandwich. We'll get to that in a moment. I want to know where your steam game of the week is. A very scary steam play, but this is the theme for week 17. And if you're an over better, here's your advice for Mace for this week. Sit back, kick your feet up, and let the wise guys bet those numbers down because you'll see pretty much seven out of 10 totals get bet down. They almost blindly bet the unders, almost like betting no on whether this player will score a touchdown like they do for every Super Bowl. I can't believe I just shared that bit of information. That was a golden nugget for anyone that picked it off. Um, but the steam play, we're going on a total with that theme. We're going under in Tampa Bay, Atlanta. I know the scariest under on the board, but I got to get, get on board. I, I, this is the steam play. Multiple groups got buy orders on that under, and I'm going to jump along because, what, they scored 70-plus when they played this game a couple weeks back. Usually doesn't repeat itself. So I could see why the wise guys bet this under. I don't think there's going to be a public better out there willing to bet it, but I see, think there's some value. All right. Now, the reason I said that uh, last week that there wouldn't be a sandwich this week is because to have a sandwich, Ace, you got to have bread on the top, get a bread on the bottom. And that means what happened last week and what's happening next week. Well, it's the last week of the season. How can I have a sandwich? 
Well, I found one, and I'll explain why. And we're going to look at the New York Jets traveling to play Buffalo. And when you look at this game, Ace, you've got Buffalo coming off their two biggest games of the season. Yeah. Two weeks ago, they played my Pittsburgh Steelers, which when they were playing that game, that was for the number five playoff spot. Um, Pittsburgh beats them. They own the number five spot and would have clinched a playoff spot. Buffalo wins it. They clinch the five spot. Well, Buffalo won. So they were in the playoffs. But Buffalo wasn't done. They had an opportunity. New, New England. To still win the division, go into New England, and they played their guts yeah, out last did. week. I had New England. I thank God he got that two-point conversion. I got lucky. <laughs> yeah. I admit it. That, that, they were never going to get that separation. You know, I got lucky. Sometimes it's, it's better to be lucky once in a while, have yeah, lady you, luck on our side. You know when you're on the wrong side and you win. They did everything in that game but win the game. And they had an opportunity at the end. Yeah. They were down there knocking on the door, and New England shut the door on them. So now with absolutely nothing to play for, and they've got a playoff game next week, Makes it creates sense. a sandwich spot for us. And for the Jets, this is one of those teams where, Ace, we talk about teams where – they're out of the playoffs, nothing to play for. So where's the motivation? Well, here's where the motivation is for the Jets. They got off to a horrible start this season. Yeah. If you remember, they lost that first Donald game to, 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 to Buffalo. And then we find out afterwards that he was sick for that game. And then he with missed Mono the next. Of yeah, all things. Then he missed the next how many games. That offense was atrocious. They and had to sign lingers. somebody. That lingers, that yeah. sickness. So now that he's healthy and the team's playing with confidence, they've won five of their last seven games. That's building momentum for next year. And here's the biggest stat for you. Where you got one team that doesn't care, can't improve their stock, where the Jets can, Buffalo's the number four defense. But what intensity level are they going to come with this week with the you know playoff game next week and nothing to improve this week? But no who's reason. The no who's the number five defense in the NFL? The New York Jets, right behind them. And I actually was shocked to see that they were that high yeah. up. Um, Buffalo number four, Jets number five, Buffalo not having any reason to play. The Jets playing for next year and playing well right now, one five of their last seven. I'm going to take the New York Jets, call for the mild upset. They're not getting many. We're going to take them 23-17 to 17 as our final sandwich game of the season. Yes, officially the final sandwich game. And, Ace, we've had a nice run. With I ate well this year with you. Yeah. 11-5 and five on those. Oh, yeah. Ace, we've got some time left, so let's you know what? Questions. I like let's the go, questions. Let's go to the, the yeah, mailbag. Some dudes ask some good ones, and, and I love they share actionable, you know, info with them. I get it. A, a, a pick, a winning pick's actionable, but nothing like this one's right actually. Question. This question came directly for you, Give it to and me. it's from um, on Twitter at Track Gabe, and he asked specifically for you. If the Sharps and syndicates that you follow, do they ever bet NFL three-team 10-point teasers or four-team 13-point teasers? No, no, not, not anymore. Um, when I first came out here to Vegas 22 years ago, yes. Uh, the three-team 10-point teasers, absolutely. And the reason was they were priced to where there was an advantage. Just like the parlay cards when I first came to Vegas, there was 15 of them at least. Um, they realized you could get an advantage on a handful of them. Now you walk into a casino, there's a teaser card, a parlay card, and a couple other, you know, negative EV cards, and that's it. Um, and they're just not profitable long term. The, the, the exotics that the betting syndicates use are around robins, and they do so mostly around this time of year, college basketball, because they can't get a lot of money down. And when you can't get money down on the totals, they move so much the only way to get that money in is parlaying it. And they'll tie in two team and three team combinations of round robins on you know college basketball totals. Anywhere the limits are low, that's how they get more money down, but they don't really mess with teasers because the casinos have done a good job of making them negative EV. All right, we've got another question uh, from Brooklyn Eddie. And he asked, I know certain point spreads, numbers like three, four, six, and seven, you know, you could buy a half a point, but when should you buy and not buy on those numbers? And Ace, obviously the threes and sevens are the key numbers. The four and sixes, not so much in my opinion. Yeah, I, listen, <clears throat> it, it's a, 
it's one of those questions that I think you could argue both sides. Um, personally, I, I think the only time you sh the only number you should buy it on is that three. Occasionally on that seven, um, if you could get it for ten cents. You, if you're paying more than ten cents on the seven, I, I don't mess with it. Um, and if I could get it on the three, it's got to be at minus 125 or better. If you're laying minus 130 for that half point, you're better off laying minus three and a half at minus 110. Long term, it's more advantageous for you. Those times that it beats you, I get it. You remember them. They sting the most. Um, but long term, and that's all you can, you know, you look at, um, big sample sizes, that's the right move. In the, I'll throw one other in there. If you have a three and it's juiced one way, you can take the other side. If you get it side. a discount. Yeah, yeah you're getting yeah. the other side at a discount to get then the Then I always point. do then, it yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, and I try to do that, and even in the subscription, I'll write it to, to, even if you can't, like, put it into the pick, to just let the people know. Do it on your own, even though I'll grade it at whatever. Right. I don't care what I'm grading at. Do it up to, you're getting it at a discount now. Now, staying with that uh, theme, we've got another question, and this one comes from, <laughs> this is a great Twitter handle, Chili Putty. <laughs> Chili Putty asks, for basketball, it seems like it's so much harder for Vegas to create and be accurate on the lines. Oh, yeah. Is it a good idea to flex the spread so I'm not paying the juice? And his example is, if the line on the Lakers is minus 2, at minus 110, is it worth grabbing them at minus three plus 100? We got 40 seconds. You're, you're, you're really making it harder than it needs to be. When, when books only have a small window of time to come out with numbers, rest assured, they're not gonna be as, as accurate or as strong. That's why the limits are a lot lower. Um, but with that said, in NBA, the scoring is so high, there's so much variance there. Personally, again, I think you're making it harder than it needs to be of trying to get even money because of the yeah. minus and three instead of minus two and laying more than you should. My answer to that, too, is can you buy a point for 10 cents? No. Yeah. No. You're exactly. Getting, you're, you're, getting, you're, only you're, only get, you're only getting 10 cents. You're yeah. Getting, yeah, you're not getting so a bar. No value there. Great stuff, uh, guys. We're going to step out. And when we return, uh, next up, it's going to be uh, best bets. Best bets and the. Uh, Parking dogs, that's up next. Guys, we are red hot in football, going 12 and two with our last 14 selections. Get 12 full months of my all access service for just $1,200. That's just $100 a month to receive every play in all sports, including all of my big 5% plays. Those plays sell for $40 by themselves. This is the deal of the year. Just use coupon code GIFT100 at checkout and receive 12 full months for $1,200. That's a savings of $799 off the yearly rate. Go to my homepage at wagertalk.com now to sign up. Want up to the minute scores and odds direct from Las Vegas? Then check out our Wager Talk odds page. You'll get all the latest lines along with moves as they happen from all the biggest books in Las Vegas, including Westgate Superbook, Circa, Golden Nugget, Wynn, Stations, CG, and South Point, just to name a few. Best of all, it's absolutely free. It's time to bring in our resident stat man, Ralph Michaels, for some TNA. Ralph, what have you dug up for this week? It's week 17, and it's a different handicap on week 17 than the rest of the season. It is, and really I just wanted to get good onto the basics. Some numbers, and you know, you're not basing plays on these numbers, but it gives you an idea if your thought process is correct. Much like in the college bowls, I'm a big fan of betting those six and six teams that have motivation for a winning team or a losing team. So I said, what happens with NFL teams that are seven and eight? Same scenario, well, going back to 2000, so we have a 20-year process, those seven and eight teams that are a home favorite have gone 68% against the spread. Now, that's the Dallas Cowboys. They're playing for a different motivation, but again, for that thought process. So how about eight and seven teams? Well, eight and seven teams, if you're on the road, you already got your eighth win, you know, and it may not mean that much to you, away dogs that are eight and seven, have gone 32% all the way back to 1989. Wow. So we are talking 30 plus years of, of being an away dog, an eight and seven team, 32% against the spread. The other numbers vary, you know, an eight and seven home dog has gone eight and three, 
eight and seven home favorite, 45 percent, eight and seven away favorite, 60 percent. So they they are back and forth. But the two things to remember, seven and eight teams as a home favorite, very good. Eight and seven teams as an away dog, very bad. That's kind of surprising because you would think at eight and seven, you know, there's a difference between a non-losing season yeah. and a winning season. You would think they'd have the motivation. But for the most season, eight and seven, you're out of the playoffs. Right. You know, your season's over for all, all intents and purposes. All right, Marco, this is an easy one. Week 17, over or unders? Well, for me, I look at overs because I, the games that don't involve, you know, have any meaning, I think you don't get defense. If you just blindly played every under in the last 10 years, you've hit 57%. Really? Yes, week but 17. But that's everyone. Now, it, for totals of 47 or higher, it's actually 60% to the over. Okay. So totals of 46 or less are actually almost a 59% play over under week 17. Teams. Uh, double digit favorites week 17 good or bad double digit favorites I'm gonna say good 20 and 0 straight up 13 6 and 1 against the spread I was surprised I thought they'd be a, a worse record than that road teams week 17 good or bad road teams week 17 doesn't matter favorite or dog just road teams gonna go with bad 58% Wow. It's, it's been a positive. And maybe the distractions aren't there. You're on the mm -hmm. road. You're focused on winning a game. The home teams are dealing with the season ending, winding down the season. And one from our good friend Mark Lawrence. This is a wild record. Some factors, more factors than I'm accustomed to. But week 17, defending Super Bowl losers coming off an ATS loss, 18-2 and two against the spread. That's the LA Rams this week. Really? So, and, and everything always says, you know, there's, there's so many negatives all season long with the Super Bowl loser. But we know how many don't repeat. Yeah. So this is their last game to show that they are a, a decent team returning. All right. Great stuff as always from Ralph. Now it's time for Kelly's favorite portion of the show. She loves underdogs, but really who doesn't love an underdog with bite? And that's up next as we bring in our Barking Dogs with VR. Great stuff as always, Ralph. Now it's time for Kelly's favorite portion of the show is she loves underdogs, but really, who doesn't love a dog with bite? And we all know Johnny likes to have a little sprinkle on the money line. So VR, what dog do you have for us this week is your barking dog? Arr, we don't have Kelly bark. here, so I was going to bark. You bark, like, okay, bark for me, because you never Arr. were. You would never bark for Kelly. <laughs> no, no. That's right. That's Kelly right, actually, Kelly. Kelly turned me on to this game. Um, for my barking dog, and that's the New York football giants. Um, after she said it, I looked at it, and it makes perfect sense. They're playing good down the stretch, man. I mean, they've won their last two games. They've covered their last three games, and here come the Eagles off that big, big game against the Dallas Cowboys that we were all on. <laughs> um, I, I agree with it. You know, why not? It's Eli's last game, right? At, He's not quarterback enough. I know. I, I saw they had, uh, what's it called, as uh, – Daniel Jones. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah, as the slated starter. But uh, they may, you may see Eli get a peep. No, you don't think the last game at Giant Stadium? He, they, they should. They, they should, should let him but, at least uh, play, dude. Yeah. I don't know. He did throw two, uh, two touchdown passes against this team a couple weeks ago on uh, Monday night. I'll piggyback Kelly. I'll piggyback Kelly on this one. I'll take the Giants. All right. Well, for me, uh, not a lot of dogs. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, a, attractive, at least. Well, I I've got a dog that's got the best record in the NFL, and uh, it's true. I'm not going to be popular in my hometown with this pick, but I'm going against my Steelers. Um, I went against them with the teaser, and I'm coming right back and going against them on my barking dog play. And I realize Baltimore's not that big of a barking dog, uh, but the ramifications of this game is huge because Pittsburgh's playing for their playoff lives and need Tennessee Again, to go the down. the Ravens at home as dogs after what you've seen this season? It, you know, I know it looks, you know, but here's the thing. But I, it isn't. I don't think anyone's rushing to bet them because of the situation they're in. So yeah. I don't think it's a bad they, play. They know that they're, they're sitting starters and everything else. Lamar Jackson's not playing. RG3 is going to quarterback. But here's the thing. I'm looking at this Pittsburgh Steeler offense, and they've scored 10 points in yeah, the last, yeah, yeah. last two weeks back-to-back. 
And this is a problem. Uh, Duck That's Hodges, the one you need to get it done. You need to get it done. The Hodges right now, I don't know where his confidence level is going to be. He was horrible in the Buffalo game. He was horrible in the Jet game. Got pulled. End up right, Mason Rudolph, which is not a great alternative to go back to. They brought him back in, gave him a little spark, and then he gets hurt. And then they got to bring Hodges back in. After getting benched, where's your where's your yeah. confidence level? And now throw it into a must-win situation. Now they don't control their own destiny, so they could go out and win and still lose. And they don't won't think know the backups. That, sorry, don't think the backups don't want to play. Like if, if if Baltimore sits some of their starters, that yeah. these guys aren't coming in looking to win the game and show up. RG three has been in the league for how long? And They're going to play for him. Get, his right. offense line is going to block for him. His Absolutely. running back is going to run for him. His wide receiver is going to run routes for him. And then let's I'm going to throw something out there for you, Ace. For Baltimore and Coach Harbaugh, this is basically a preseason game. Yeah, he right? takes them pretty seriously. You know, right? right? Yeah. Who has the best record in, in preseason? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? He's been prone to take those pretty damn seriously he, at and times. Let's not forget. Baltimore and Pittsburgh don't like each other. Yeah. They yeah. Do you don't not. want to give up a win, even if it's for no reason. Yeah. That's what I, it's and a, if you could end the Steelers season. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's what I mean. Little, there's a lot to like with Baltimore. a little added. little added. Yeah, you turn me on to them. Like and Kelly here's the, the, here's the last part that's going to make this Pittsburgh offense even uh, tougher to perform here. Uh, obviously, uh, we've seen they've struggled. But this week, Marquise Pouncey's out. He's not playing. It's huge. He, people don't put enough on the, the line or the center position is the quarterback of the offensive yeah, line. Yeah. He calls the blocking schemes and everything else. And worth as he's much out as some of, wide receivers he's one and of running the, backs. Yeah. Too. He's, he's the one of the best uh, centers in uh, the NFL. And when he's out, we saw the Steelers struggle when he was out. Uh, they only scored 16 points at Cincinnati uh, when he was out after, because he got the suspension from the, the fight at the first Cleveland game and everything else when he came to Rudolph's defense. So I'm on Baltimore. I know uh, not popular in Pittsburgh, but I am on Baltimore. Now for best bets. And Kelly's not here, but um, she did text me her best bet. I told you yeah, about that's it. A turn, that uh, gave uh, me the Giants. You know, and Kelly's best bet is on the New York football Giants. She likes them plus the points. You know Kelly likes those. She's going to sprinkle that money. She'll have a money line. Those home dogs, you know, it's not a primetime game, but it is primetime for Philadelphia. Indeed because it is. They still need to win to uh, stay the division leader. They lose. They didn't have an easy time against the Giants yeah. three weeks ago. They no. barely won that game. On the Monday night game, and that was with Eli, <laughs> who hadn't played in how, yeah, how many yeah. weeks. They barely won that. Yeah, that's so uh, I can't disagree with Kelly. And uh, Ace, who is your best bet? All right, this is uh, kind of rare for me. You know, people think I just bet the dogs, whatever, and that's just not the case. It just happens to be we'll give one best bet on the show. I'm going with a big favor here. I'm going to lay the chalk with the New England Patriots. That's right. Um, I bet them last week they came through with for me after years of moving against them and losing. <laughs> finally, I've been able to, to cash in on the Patriots. I'm going to bet them again. Um, listen, I know Miami's looked like they got some bite to them. They've won four games. No one thought that after a couple weeks into the season. Um, I get it, but it's, it's that time of the year. It's December, it's New England. Seven point lead turns into 14, turns into 21. We've seen this again and again and again, over and over and over and over. Miami will probably be covering in the first half. And by the end of the game, New England covers because they win by 17 to 24. Give me the Patriots. They're go they got to go into the playoffs with a little momentum. So they will show up and win this game and it won't be hard. Getting separation like you say how about the uh fourth quarter of uh, the miami defense lab? i should say the last five minutes of yeah that game, that, game. <laughs> that was that was in cincinnati wow man yeah. i felt bad I, I i wanted i had both i had the giants money line cincinnati money line so both of them in overtime but, oh. and i had a chance to win both it's split but cincinnati is the one i wanted yeah. For me, for my best bet, Ace, uh, I'm going to go to the Philadelphia Giants game as well, but I'm not going on the side. Total. I'm taking the total here, and I'm going over the total. I love the total here, as I think this total is a little bit low. And I know these two just met a few weeks ago on Monday Night Football, as you talked to. Um, the total was the same on that Monday night game. It was 45. 
They only scored 40 points in that game. So why do I think this total's low? Well, at the time, Philadelphia wasn't playing well. They had lost three in a row. So they, and they had just given up 37 points the week before to Miami. So they were on a national stage where that defense had got embarrassed the week before they came to play. Now they were facing the Giants with Eli, who hadn't played yeah. in, in months. On Monday the, night. Yeah, he had two big pass plays that, you know, he caught them in a bad defense and scored. But really, if you look at the rest of the game, yeah, the Giants much. didn't do anything. And Philadelphia finally got there, got the game tied, went to overtime, got the win. I think you're going to see a lot more points this week, and here's why. Daniel Jones is back in there. They're going to sling the ball all over the place. The Giants got a little momentum. They won two games mm -hmm. in a row, and they're going to attack this Philadelphia defense. That can be beat through the air. I think Daniel yeah, Jones poses a bigger threat through the air than Eli did at all. Um, also looking at the fact that this is a game that the Giants are in a spoilers role. They can take chances in this game. Philadelphia, you know, they're feeling a little fat and sassy after last week, week yeah. beating Dallas and figure now all we got to do is go in and win and Against we got the division. We if the Giants keep scoring, Philly's got to an answer. And I think this is going to get into a track meet game. And with the Giants where I say they can take chances, if you got a fourth and two, yeah, you're, you're out of the playoffs. What's you're, the matter? Yeah, you you're don't going punt. For it. You don't punt. You go for it, okay? And if you take chances like that, two things can happen, and they're both good. You either make it and you continue the drive, or you don't, good and field the other position. team's got a good field yeah. position the other way. So I put all of that together. I look at it. In the Philadelphia offense, prior to last week's game, which was a playoff atmosphere, obviously, because they were playing for the division lead, the three games before that, Ace, 31 points they scored, 23 points they scored, 37 points. Uh, points. I'm going to go ahead and look at this and say we can get the job done. The Giants has allowed 27 or more points in 11 of their like 16 it. games this year. I'm going over the total for my best bet. We're going to step out for a quick break. And when we return, it's our final thoughts on this week's NFL action. We'll have the recap. If you didn't already fast forward, we'll have that recap for you next here on Bet On It. I'm Yanni the Great Corrales. When I came to Wager Talk in 2018, I told you I'm not here to promote short term random hot streaks or big games. I'm here to do what less than 1% of bettors are able to that's win long term. I turned the profit for you in 2018, and we're a week away from being up for 2019. So here's what I'm going to do. You can jump on board for the entire 2020. That's correct. The entire 12 months, every sport, every premium I release for only $100 a month. Ride with me the entire 2020. We're going for another straight winning year, only $100 a month. Hey guys, I'm Lawrence Presman, the Prez co founder of Wager Talk. I'm excited that you're all watching Bet on it. Just want to tell you guys about our hockey show, Puck Time. Uh, it's honestly the best show that I do uh, all week. We do it with all of the hockey talent over at Wager Talk and Sports Memo, from Alex B. Smith to Dave Koch and Carmine Bianco, Buster Sports, myself, and Andrew McGinnis. Uh, different uh, co-hosts every day. It's hockey all the time, and it's one of the best sports to bet on and certainly the most exciting sport to watch. Check us out 2 p.m. Eastern every day, Monday to Friday at Wager Talk TV. Welcome back to Bet On It. This is tonight's final segment of the show. If you just fast forward to now, you missed a lot of good information as we broke down this week's NFL card, but if you landed right here and fast forwarded on the last segment, well, you're going to get the pick. So let's recap tonight's show. We started off with the primetime games. The big 425 game Eastern time was the Tennessee Houston game. We disagreed on this one. I'm on Tennessee minus the three and a half. Johnny's on Houston plus three and a half. One of us is going to be happy. <laughs> Someone's going to win. <laughs> and in the late game, this is the Sunday night game, and it is the biggest game on the card this week. San Francisco at Seattle battling for the uh, 
NFC West, and I'm on Seattle plus three. Ace, what's going on? We disagree Opposites again. Opposites there, I know. All right. You see one and one for both of us probably. Probably a split screen yeah. right there. All right. Going to the next segment, teasers. I'm on Baltimore plus eight and Kansas City minus two and a half. Now, remember, if your line is nine on Kansas City, you're going to have to use a seven-point teaser to get it under the field goal. So this is a six-point teaser if you can get eight and a half. It's a, a seven-point teaser if you're at nine. Yanni's on Jacksonville plus 10 and the Jets plus seven and a half. Moving on to the next segment, Steam Game. Tampa Ace. under. Atlanta, Tampa under 48. I'm on a sandwich game with the New York Jets. New York Jets plus two. If you're hungry. Yeah, we are hungry. 11 and 5 on those games this year. Jets if you're hungry. How about some barking dogs? We got some? Well, we've got Baltimore plus two, and I've just annihilated or pissed off all of my hometown <laughs> Pittsburgh fans. And Ace is coming with the New York Giants plus four and a half. I think we're going to see that play once again. In the up best next, bet segment, we got Kelly's not here, but she sent me a play. Kelly's on the New York Giants plus four and a half for her best bet. Johnny's on New England minus. I don't think I've ever seen you lay that uh, many points, points in my yeah. life, right? New New England minus 16. And I am on Philadelphia, New York Giants over 45 for my best bet. Guys, it was fun doing the show. We'll have Kelly back next week. I know you guys are all disappointed. No Kelly this week. Uh, college bet on it. No college show this week, but we did do last week, and we had a lot of the bowl games that are up this week, so you can check that out. Go back to last week's college bet on it. And from Gianni, Ralph, myself, and Kelly, until next week, let's bet on it.